Welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you how to give your images a nice soft glow look, uh, a dreamy look you could say. Uh, this is very popular with wedding photos and just photos that have a big light source like this one where there is a uh, big window here in the background. I've also done it on this image here and I can show you a, uh, this is a before after so you can see it's got a little bit more of a glow to it gives it a dreamy effect and again here's before so pretty good image uh, before we even started but after we just have this uh, slightly more dreamy look to it so this is a pretty easy technique that I'm going to show you today but before I get into that uh, I just want to tell you guys about my new GIMP course. This is GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher. Learn and master the basics and learn proper photo editing techniques. It's listed here as $20. Of course, I'm going to put a discount link in the description. So if you've been wanting to learn how to get better at photo editing, maybe even start editing photos for clients, this is the perfect course for you. You can also visit my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. And here you'll see uh, all of our up-to-date tutorials that we put on our YouTube channel, as well as we've got some text tutorials here that are not on our YouTube channel. You can also sign up for our GIMP newsletter on here. You can visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Always got new tutorials up on here. Our Facebook at facebook.com slash Davies Media Design. And our Twitter at Davies Media DES. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I got this image on uh, Pexels, which is a free stock photo website. Um, all you got to do is go to pexels.com. Uh, you can search photos on there for free, or I'll put the uh, link to this download in the description. But all you got to do is right-click it and go to Save Image As. That's going to save the image onto your computer. Once you have the image on your computer, go to File, Open and just navigate to wherever your file is located on your computer and you can double click that file or you can click on it and go to open. And now here we have the file located in GIMP. Before I get started on the actual effects of the image, the first thing I want to do is scale this image because it is a little bit large which makes it a little slower to work with on our computer. So I'll go to image, scale image, and I'm going to change this to percentage and I don't have any particular size I want this to be so I'm just going to cut this, actually I'm going to cut this by 60% uh, so that it's now 40% of the original size. Then I'll click Z to grab my zoom tool and just click to zoom in. And if you zoom in too much you can hold control to zoom out. Okay so once I've done that I'm going to come over here and I'm going to duplicate my main layer by clicking this duplicate icon here. Then I'm going to double click to rename this layer and I'm going to name it Bride Blur. Once I've done that, I'm going to come over here to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And here is the preview box. You can click and drag to see uh, you know, which part of the image is blurred and how much it's blurred. And you can come over here to Blur Radius. And uh, I have this set to 50. You can set it to whatever looks right for your image. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Okay, so right now the whole image is blurred, but that's not what we want. So I'm going to grab my Ellipse Select tool. I'm going to make sure this Feathered Edges box is checked. That's just going to make sure that when we erase within this uh, Ellipse Select area, that uh, the boundaries aren't so noticeable. You know, they won't be sharp edges. They'll be a little bit more blurred or fuzzy. They call that Feather Edges. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my ellipse. And I just want the ellipse to uh, overlap on the corners here a bit. I don't want them, I don't want the ellipse to be, you know, within the boundaries of the image because that'll be a little bit too noticeable. And once I get this adjusted to how I want it, I'll grab my erase tool. And actually, I'm going to hit Control Z before I start erasing. What I need to do is I need to right click on this layer here and go to Add Alpha Channel. And that'll add a transparency to this image so that when I erase it, now what comes up is the um, original layer below it. And by the way, you can increase or decrease the size of your eraser by uh, dragging over here, or you can use the left or right brackets on your keyboard. Okay. By the way, if you don't want to use your eraser tool, you can also just hit the delete key, and that will delete everything inside of your ellipse. I'm going to go to select none, 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is select the light in this picture, and I can do that easily by coming over here to my main layer, and I can grab my Select by Color tool, and I can click on the light itself, and as you can see, it does a pretty good job um, just right off the bat of selecting the areas that are light, and uh, the reason for that is because I've made some adjustments to the threshold here. Now the threshold is going to determine how similar colors have to be in order for the Select by Color tool to select them. So uh, basically, uh, the, the lower the threshold, you can see the less it kind of discriminates the colors here. Uh, or I should say the more it discriminates the colors because it's only selecting uh, whites that are very close to this color white that I selected. You'll see here that these are white, but they're not quite as white. Um, and, and being that her dress is sort of white as well, you want to make sure that not too much of her, of her dress is selected. So like for instance, when I turn the threshold all the way up, it selects all of the light parts of the image that contain a little bit of white. So I've basically found the perfect balance here, around 15, and now that selects uh, all the highlights in the image without selecting a lot of her dress, even though there is still a little bit of highlights on her dress that are selected, and that's okay. So once you have the right amount of light selected, just hit Control C on your keyboard and then Control V. And what that did was it copied and pasted those light areas onto their own floating selection layer. And so now I can come over here to the uh, Create a New Layer icon and go ahead and click that icon. And so now when I hide the other layers, you'll see that the light itself is on its own layer. And that'll be useful to us because now we can blur just the light within the image. And so the first thing I want to do, because we're going to be blurring this, and I don't want the blur to be restricted within the layer size, which is this uh, yellow dotted rectangle here, I'm going to go to Layer, Layer to Image Size. And so now you can see the layer is the entire size of this image here, of the composition. So now I'm going to go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur again. And this time we can kind of crank the blur up a little bit more until we get the desired amount of blur that we want and then click OK. And now you can see that it's given this a much more dreamy look. And you can come over here to the layer and you can uh, come up to the opacity slider here and you can turn it down if you don't like the effect up as much or you can just crank it all the way up. Now the next thing we can do is we can come over here to our uh, bride uh, original layer and we can come over here to the Levels tool. Um, so I've actually added this icon to my toolbox. I have a tutorial on my channel on how to do that. Otherwise, you can go to Colors, Levels. And I can come over here to Channel, and I can change the levels for red, green, or blue within the image. And so if I select red, if I come down here to Output Levels, when I drag the black triangle here on the left side of this uh, bar, you'll see that it adds more red to my image. So I'm going to add a little bit of red in here, not too much. If I come over here to the right side, that's actually going to add the opposite. So it'll add a little bit of cyan. And I can uh, check or uncheck the preview box. And I'm just trying to add a little bit of uh, subtle colors in here. Then I can come over here and do the same for the blue channel. And when I drag this over, the black triangle, uh, that'll add more blue to the image. When I drag the white triangle over here, that'll add a little bit of yellow to the image. I can then come over here to value and adjust the value of all of the colors within the image, uh, adjust the levels of all the colors in the image, and just get a, a little bit more contrast in there. Click OK. And the last thing I want to do is sharpen this image a little bit. So I'll go to Filters, Enhance, Unsharp Mask. And here you can drag the preview window. I would drag it onto your subject's face. And I'm just going to keep the settings as they are, 5 radius, 40 amount. And click OK. And that sharpens the image up a little bit. So now we can see what this image looks like before we added the effect here, and then of course after. And so there you have it. It's got a slightly more dreamy look. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Davies Media Design. Follow us on Twitter at Davies Media D-E-S. 
And of course, don't forget about our photo editing course on Udemy, GIMP photo editing from beginner to pro photo retoucher. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description so you'll get a discount when you enroll in the course. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.